Hey, Adam from Be Any Lens, and today I'm going to do part two in the tutorial in how to change the sky in your photos using Adobe Photoshop. So let's get down to it. All right, so today I'm going to show you two really amazing ways to do it. These are almost like magic. You're going to love this. So for the first one, I'm going to start with this photo here and I'm going to swap the sky for the Milky Way so that it looks like it's been taken at nighttime with the Milky Way in the background. It'll look something like this. So how do we do it? Well, let's start with this image. Before we even introduce the Milky Way part, we need to actually make it look like nighttime because Daytime, the light is much warmer than nighttime. Nighttime, everything has a blue cast to it. So if we want this to look realistic, we need to first start by changing that. So to do that, there's a bunch of ways you could do it, but I'm going to do it by using a hue and saturation adjustment layer. So in your adjustment layers here, you just click on this one. This one is hue saturation. Okay. I am going to do something that may seem a little bit strange, but it will actually work out in the end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring that saturation right up. That's just going to make the effect much more obvious for me as I'm changing it. Then I'm going to click colorize and that's going to convert all the different colors in this image to a different shade of the one color. And then I need to drag the hue until it takes on that blue kind of color, like at nighttime. Something like maybe about there. And then I'm going to bring the lightness up quite high. This will make sense in a moment because the way that we're going to combine this with the background image uh, needs it to be quite light. I'm going to accept that. And then I'm going to come here to the layers panel and click on the blend mode. It's set by default to normal. I'm going to bring it down to multiply. Okay. And then we have this. So this is pretty much the same, but it's everything has been given that more blue cast. So without it, looks like this. With it, looks like this. This is much more like how it would look at nighttime. Obviously it would be darker, but it's going to have that blue cast. All right, so I'm just gonna hide that for now by clicking on the eye. We'll come back to that later. We need to now introduce our Milky Way. So I've got a Milky Way photo open here. This is also a Creative Commons photo. And as we learned in the last video, with the Move tool selected by hitting V, just drag that up to the tab with our original photo and drop it in. And we want to resize it so that this fills the sky. So I'm going to Command T, Control T, and stretch it out. so that that fills the photo. Okay, hit enter to keep that. Right, now what we're going to do is we're going to make a copy of that background layer and we're gonna drag it on top of the Milky Way. So we learned in the last video, Command J or Control J will create a copy. I'm gonna show you a different way to do it now, just so you've got more general Photoshop knowledge. You just take that layer, drag it down to the new layer icon here and lift up and that will also create a copy. So Command J will do it or drag it onto that. That will also do it. All right, so I've got this layer. I'm going to drag it on top of the Milky Way. So the Milky Way is below, but it's hidden by this layer. So what we're going to do to blend the two now is to hide the sky from the image and reveal the Milky Way below. Now, the way we're going to do this is, this is, this is brilliant. Honestly, this is a really great way to do it. So you just double click on the layer and that will bring up the layer style panel. Over here in blending options, this is what we're going to use. 
we're going to find a way to hide the sky and reveal the Milky Way below. So the sky is found in the blue channel. So we're going to change here where it says blend if. We're going to change that to blue. And we're going to change the way that the blue channel is either visible or transparent. This is our entire blue channel. Everything with any range of blue will be in here. This is the bright part of the blue channel and this is the darkest part. So we're going to be hiding the bright parts of the blue channel, which is where the sky and the clouds are. So as I click on this arrow and drag it down, you'll see starting with the clouds and then moving into the sky, it'll start hiding that sky and revealing the Milky Way layer that's below. And that already is pretty cool. But let's zoom in and see how it's looking here in the area with the trees and leaves and things. That doesn't look great at all. It's really blocky and, and it's not a smooth transition, which is what we need. We need a smooth transition for it to look natural. But we can fix that. We just hold down the Alt key and drag one side of the arrow and that's going to create a smoother transition. So the gap between these two parts of the arrow are where it's transitioning from completely transparent to completely visible. So this is a, the, the wider this is, the smoother the transition will be until it's just almost a blur. But what we want is something where we're going to see these branches and the leaves, but that it's a reasonably smooth transition. Maybe something about there. Hit OK. So now when we zoom back out, It's, it's, it's okay. It's okay. But we have a bit of a problem. What is the problem? Look at these rocks here. We're actually seeing the Milky Way through the rocks. It's hiding part of the image where these rocks are. And also, look at this tree trunk. We can see the Milky Way through that. Why? What's going on there? That's because the reflective parts of the rocks and the, the and the tree bow are actually, they've got a lot of blue in them. So when we're hiding the blue parts of the blue channel, we're actually hiding those reflective parts of the rocks and the trees. So we need to bring that back somehow. So the way we do that is we're going to create another copy of the background, just command J to do that, control J or drag it onto the new layer panel. And we're going to put that above the Milky Way. So now that layer is between our first background layer and the Milky Way. So for now, we're going to hide everything in that layer. So to do that, we create a layer mask while holding down the Alt key. So hold Alt and click on this one. And again, it's completely hidden. We can see in the layers panel, it's there, but there is a black mask over it. Anywhere where it's black is where it's hidden. So the whole thing is hidden. What we're going to do now is take a white paintbrush, hit B for brush to change the tool. Make sure that it's white over here in the foreground. Yes, it is. And then anywhere where we paint on this layer, it will bring back that part of the image. So you can see now I'm bringing back those parts of the rock and the tree bough that were removed when we hid the blue channel. Now parts of this image, we can do that with a very large brush. Again, increase the size of the brush is the right bracket key. You can do these rocks here. And 
and then we can go in and do these bits a bit more carefully with a smaller brush. Alright, there we go. So there we've got our Milky Way. It's even reflected in the water here, but it doesn't look very realistic because we've got the Milky Way, the night sky, with a daytime image. So here's where that hue saturation layer that we created before is going to come into play. So I'm going to make it visible, click the eye tool, and I'm going to drag that over the top. And suddenly, we have nighttime. The problem though, is that we've actually added that blueness also to the night sky where the Milky Way is. So it's actually changed the look of the sky a little bit. So what we want to do is just apply that blueness to the foreground, but not to the sky in the background. So how do we do that? There's actually a really easy way to do it. We just go to the hue saturation layer, right click on it and select create clipping mask. And what that will do is it will apply the adjustment just to the layer directly below and to none of the layers further down in that uh, pile of layers we've got. So it's only going to apply it to the background copy. Uh, so let's do that. So you see right then, it brightens that sky back up again and gives it its natural colors while we're now applying that effect to the scene in the foreground. Remember, we brushed back in some parts of that scene in what the layer I've got called background copy two. So if I just hide the layer over that, you can see all of these parts are still quite warm and yellow. So I need to do the same thing to this layer. So I'm going to copy the hue saturation clipping mask and I'm going to drop it over that background copy and create another clipping mask. So that effect will just apply to that layer. And so when I bring back the layer on top, now it's a much more uniform blueness. I'm still not completely satisfied with the image though. Uh, so now it, that I've combined the two and I've got the levels of the colors roughly where I want them to be, what I can do now is apply some adjustments to the whole image and those adjustments are going to help tie everything together. So I might add a curves layer just to change the levels of brightness. So I'm going to bring the bright bits up a little bit and create a bit of an S-curve, bringing the shadows down again, just to create that bit of contrast. About with, okay. And maybe I will just bring a bit of gamma correction to make it look that little bit more nighty. All right, that'll do there. That's okay. However, I think that sky, um, we're not really seeing the center of the Milky Way. We're not seeing the most dramatic part. So I might just drag that around until I place it a little bit higher in the picture so that we can see the cool part of the Milky Way. So move back to the move tool or just hit V to do that. Make sure that the Milky Way layer is selected and we can drag that around. If I put it a little higher in the image, there we go. And there we have it. The Milky Way over Gunnywigul Nature Reserve. We've gone from this to this using the blend if blending option.
Well, it seems I've gone and bitten off more than I could chew once again. I thought I could do four of these in one video. I managed two in the first one, but you know what? I think I might have to call it a day with this one and I'll do the final way, which is a really good one. Pretty technical though. Um, I'll say that for the next video. However, I probably won't be doing it for another few videos because there's actually quite a lot of things that I want to do now that we're all kind of in lockdown here in Australia. I've got some ideas for some cool things that you can do around the home to uh, build your photography, get creative, and also kill some time when you're stuck at home. So that's probably going to be the subject of my next few videos. Um, and then I'll come back to the fourth way to blend the sky from different images together uh, down the track sometime. Uh, but anyway, thanks for watching. If you're not subscribing, you should be. So hit that subscribe button, hit the bell so you get notifications when I drop a new video. And uh, if you already are subscribing, thank you so much for your support. Really appreciate that. And I will see you in the next video.